Now to help us talk about some of the other contributing factors we've seen in terms of this rally in stocks and uh, look at some of the fundamentals behind some of the price activity we just dialed up here. I want to bring in Carly Garner. She's senior commodity strategist and broker at DCarly Trading. Carly, welcome. Uh, just real quick, before we talk energy markets, when you look at rates and when you look at stocks, I mean, in many cases, a best case scenario for the bulls headed into this job support at current levels. Well, I got to admit, I'm a little bit nervous uh, with seeing the stock market rally this far, this fast. Mm -hmm. We have to, you know, uh, markets don't always have to make sense because we forget that sometimes markets aren't, uh, they're not being driven by fundamentals or mm -hmm. stories. I mean, they are indirectly, but the the, the biggest impact is human behavior. And humans have been trained to buy the dip. And until that uh, runs its course, it's, that's probably what we're going to get. But I think we're getting really, really tipsy up here. If you draw a line either on the NASDAQ 100 or the S&P 500 from the 2000 high to the 2021 high to now, uh, it comes in right around these levels. So we're overbought RSI is suggesting some divergence, which means futures are making new highs, RSI is not. So uh, it would be really healthy to see some selling here. Okay, I like this. Anytime Carly Garner tells you to kind of take a breather here, it's uh, a words of caution, I feel like. Carly, you've walked us back from many cliffs and off uh, many peaks in many ways, right? So I'm not a little bit surprised to hear you uh, uh, skeptical. Um, you know, sustainability becomes a question when you see a big rally like this. Absolutely. I mean, at some point, uh, the buyers just kind of run out of buying power, and, and then we get a little bit of a, a vacuum correct. Uh, effect in a correction. Mm -hmm. um, also, I mean, as you mentioned, the peripheral markets, like interest rates are stable. Uh, the dollar's starting to sell off a little bit. That's supportive for stocks, but it's not supportive of parabolic rallies being okay. driven by one or two stocks. So it's a little unhealthy. I feel like nothing, well, we might see parabolic moves, but long term, nothing's really supportive of them in many ways, right? It's just right. irrational exuberance in some ways of the market getting a little bit euphoric. But also we talk about trend, right? And not necessarily fading it for very specific reasons, this being one of them, right? Oftentimes they run a little bit longer than we think and uh, uh, further than we uh, anticipate. Let's talk a little bit about another contributing factor. It's not just the dollar, it's not just 10 year yields, but the fact that we've seen a uh, crude relatively contained right? Even inching its way back up to $80 recently, a bit of a scare for some, but coming back off uh, supportive of the rally we've seen and uh, in this range oftentimes or has been kind of feeding into that bullish narrative we've seen in stocks as well. Absolutely. There's a few things to keep in mind in crude oil. Uh, there's a daily chart downtrend line that comes in around 80 to 81. And so far that's been holding. But I, I think the selling is probably going to be limited to maybe the mid 70s. Uh, okay. The 200 day moving average, I think, is around 76 at this point. Um, we've got a couple trend lines that come in around 74 ish. So, I mean, uh, ultimately, I think the path least resistance is higher for crew, but there's generally a seasonal hiccup. Like uh, first couple, two, three weeks of March, often see kind of a, a, a decent sized sell off in oil, then that eventually becomes a buying opportunity. So I'm hoping to see something like that. So anybody that wants to get long can get long at better prices. Uh, but ultimately, I maintain the my general premise, which is uh, crude oil volatility is going to be lower. It's not going to be nearly as exciting as it was the last couple of years, but the path of least resistance should be higher. And I do think we break 81 and eventually make our way into the 90s. Um, and if we're talking much longer term, like months, not weeks, I think we actually could see $100 at some point this year. Talk to us about uh, prices of the pump here, Carly. One could argue the fact, well, they've been inching higher, right? But at a pace that we've been able to stomach, it was strong labor conditions here in the U.S., supportive of what we've seen. Uh, as far as uh, kind of feeding into this rally we've seen in stocks, right? Um, lower than they were last year, but still higher than they were last month. What are you watching in terms of Arbob and some of the gasoline products? Well, uh, the reality is consumers react uh, violently to, viol to volatility at the pump or even any products they're purchasing. If, if prices are moving slowly, they just generally stomach it and take it. And it doesn't uh, generally mm -hmm. affect demand as much if it's, if it's a slow move. And I think that's what, where we're going into. I think, again, volatility is probably on the decline in the energy markets. And then uh, that's a good thing for producers, consumers, because it's a lot better to plan and to absorb any price uh, changes. We're taking a look here right now, I've got uh, AAA reporting 340 for the national average yesterday. Uh, right around that, well, 339. A month ago, they were at 315, it looks like, but a year ago at 344. So uh, inching up here, talk to us a little bit about uh, Fed chair this week. Any surprises? Obviously, nothing to derail the run-up we've been talking about in stocks here. 
Yeah, it doesn't didn't seem to shock the market. Didn't shock myself either. I think uh, you know at, at some point there's not you know less is more, and sitting tight and doing nothing is probably the right move for uh, not only the Fed chair but probably most traders. This is not pro probably not a time to swing for the fence. We've seen some really crazy marches over the years. I don't know what it is with this month, but it's a little bit of a jinx month uh, in both commodities and equities. So it, it's a time to pull back some risk and just see what happens. Watch the show. And uh, maybe have a bit more of a level-headed approach towards some of the price activity <laughs> we're seeing here. Lastly, talk to us. You mentioned the jobs, uh, employment. That's the number that we're waiting on. It's headed our way in just about four minutes, Carly. Um, I've been kind of tying some of what we've seen in terms of crude prices supported by strength in labor markets, employment here in the U.S. If we're out working, in theory, we're driving, we're shopping, uh, if we're receiving paychecks, right, able to pay our mortgages. We've seen a reflection of that in terms of stocks. Uh, what are you looking for in terms of the report here at the bottom of the hour? Where should our focus be? Well, obviously, there, it's, it's hard to find uh, dark spots in the employment picture mm -hmm. in the U.S. I mean, the, the economy's booming. I use the Vegas index because I live here and I see it every day. It's busy. When This is a boom and bust city. When things are good, people are here spending money, and that's exactly what we're seeing. So um, although I'm a little bit uh, skeptical on the S&P rally, I don't think we're going into, into any kind of big recession or anything. I think we're just looking... You know, we've overdone things on the upside in prices, but the economy still looks to be doing very, very well. Um, so kudos to the Fed. They, they might have managed to get that uh, no landing or soft landing that they've been hoping for. Yeah, optimism abound amidst this yeah. balancing act that we've seen them uh, 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 initiate here. But a, a more level-headed approach towards some of the uh, euphoric uh, type uh, uh, buy with both hands and kind of close your eyes maybe type uh, price activity we've seen. Appreciate you joining us here, Carly, and sharing part of a very busy Friday morning as you get up for the jobs report. Thanks for sharing part of yours with us. Carly Garner, Senior Commodity Strategy and Broker at DCarly Trading.